Uh, I do want to say that we're at the Free Press Salon uh, December 2023. This is uh, December 9th. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, Piketon and, and other issues along the, uh, the nuclear chain that uh, um, the U.S. Department of Energy, Department of Defense, and all the other nefarious characters are out there. But we also have some other announcements as well. So we, um, historically, this Columbus uh, Free Press Salon has been sort of at, at the end of the year, sort of has been a, sort of like a holiday time. And we decided that, you know, we're still sort of in a, in a, in a mix. But if you want to meet with folks tomorrow, we're going to be uh, at Old First Presbyterian Church to do the uh, Declaration of Human Rights a uh, public reading and Yuri, who is uh, in uh, Ukraine, was very excited that we were going to do that. As as a he said, that was a great idea. Um, so we're going to do a public reading. So if anybody wants to join us at eleven oh one Bryden Road, two o'clock, uh, we'll be there. Um, but that's a quick announcement. We have some other announcements, but uh, we have traditionally been sort of an. Uh, 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 historically a, a um, holiday feel around uh, the end of the year. And so we sort of want to do um, a conversation on Portsmouth and other issues, but also a time to sort of reflect on 2023 and a projection into what 2024 may mean. So we have Vina here and I don't want to uh, waste her time too much. And so I'd like Vina to, to say a few things uh, on her mind. Uh, she's going to bring it to us tonight, I, I believe. I believe she's going to. And Pat, if she's around too, Pat and Vina have been um, very much. I met Pat, back, I mean, uh, Vina, well, I met Pat back in 1981, but I met Vina in 1989 uh, around when we were starting to do uh, the the Ohio Peace March for Global Nuclear Disarmament. We we met this the, these people that were down there in Portsmouth and the in the side of Val in the side of County, um, and Pike County, uh, saying, "Who are these people that are down here?" You know, press press was very important um, organization, and um, we thought we were able to put the hammer on P Portsmouth, but Portsmouth has, it, it has nine lives and <laughs> many more. So Vina, please share with us your perspectives tonight and we will definitely uh, join in conversation with you in, after you're done. Thank you. Like and it's great to see you. It's like great to see you. you. I'd like to thank you all for uh, inviting me on here to talk about the Python plant because we definitely need some help out here. Um, for those who don't know, Piketon is the largest facility in the world. And we have two facilities on site that are the largest in the world. Um, Piketon had two power plants that fed at Kiger Creek and Clifty Creek. Piketon is sitting on top of the largest aquifer in the Midwest and the bedrock is fractured under the site. Um, all of the pipes and things go out to the side of the river and in, within 20 miles, it goes to the high river and all the way down to the Mississippi. So Python is contaminating a lot of people that don't even know that they're being affected by the plant. I started working in the plant in 1980 as an electrician. Um, my job, they had us to go around it. I have been in all the buildings for at least six months, and they had us <clears throat> cleaning down um, contaminated electrical equipment uh, with PCB oil, but the PCB oil was radioactive, and none of us knew that, and they never suited us up. They wanted us to wear hard hats and safety glasses, and I thought it was the safest plant that I'd ever worked in. And after we got through cleaning uh, down these uh, electrical equipment that was contaminated with the uranium and the PCB oil, we dumped it down the drains. And so I complained about that. And then I wrote a grievance in 1983 while I was on plant that caused me a whole lot of problems. 
because I thought there was more than 30 workers being exposed to radiation. And I wasn't for sure how, but I just thought we were being um, expo exposed to radiation. So they did a, an investigation and trying to track it all down. And, and of course, it just died down. And then every time I went on a job, they had to have somebody with me because they said that I was better than their instruments because I kept breaking out in rashes and getting sick and my hair was flying out. Uh, I had thyroid problems. And when I got hired there, I was a healthy worker and they only hired the healthier workers. I never had any problems, never on no medication, nothing. And since I started working there, I winded up getting uh, yeah. three tumors total hysterectomy, thyroid problems. I had brilliant disease, chronic bronchitis, congested heart failure. I could go on and on and on with all of these conditions that I have because I went to work out there. Hyphen is storing like 25,000 depleted uranium cylinders out there in the yard. They cleaned up Oak Ridge and they shipped these cylinders to Python. And these cylinders give off the highest neutron exposures that you can get probably on plant side right now. And they're setting out leaking and setting them in the ground in, in the yard. And then uh, press was formed in 1986 and I became president of the Portsmouth Python Residence for Environmental Safety and Security in probably around 1989. And then in 2000, we were able to, with the company documents, break the story that Python had plutonium at the site. We weren't supposed to have plutonium. We were supposed to be a uranium enrichment facility, but what we were doing without the knowledge of the workers or the community, we were recycling reactor fuel from West Valley, New York, Canfort, um, foreign sites, uh, Russia. Russia started shipping the stuff over here in 92. And um, we didn't know. I mean, the workers, the community, no one knew. And, and what they have now on site, and we thought not to be a national dump site, they now have 12 waste, waste cells where they're decommissioning the facility and putting stuff in these waste cells. Um, they couldn't get the community to agree to do that, so they went around to the area county commissioners, and the commissioners give them permission for these waste cells. Now what's going on is uh, we had a school that was shut down because it had Neptunium and Amerigia in the air monitors on the other side of the plant out on 32's uh, Zines Middle School. The problem with this is this is the only school that was tested or they shut down 14 miles from the plant over towards Otway, the opposite direction from this other school, had air monitors. Uh, they were picking up uh, Amerasia and Neptunium 14 miles from the plant. And 14 miles from the plant, there is a couple more schools, plus all the other schools in Python. None of these schools have never been tested. They only, they only went after the one school. It, it's, uh, they, they got a new school they're building and this school is sitting out there right now in Python with a chain link fence around it, and it's been shut down. I know. Uh, Anna White, the Secretary of Energy, Anna White came to help the community. I think she's holding up my phone. Hello? Hello? Yeah, Anna, Anna White. Somebody asked a question I couldn't tell. So anyway, Anna White came and she was going to help the community because of this 14 miles from the plant. The air monitor had um, Neptunium and Amerasia, same as the school there on Zion's Corner. As soon as she went back to Washington, D.C., they called her in a room, and I had some friends that was in the, the room outside, and they fired her and got rid of her. Now they have someone, Ike Mike, that comes. All of the meetings that we have about the Python plant is held on site. None of our area representatives come and talk to us. They've had a few... A Aides that came and talked to some of us through the years, but they do nothing. They let the plant do whatever they want. They have all their meetings on site. They have an SSAB board there that is now stacked with commissioners, mayors, uh, labor, everyone except for the community. They have no 
community uh, environmental groups. Uh, they want to start up um, a thing called HALO, I, ISA Low Enrich Uranium, which can go from 5% to 20%, which they could very easily make weapons with this 20%. Um, what press think they're wanting to do is to clean up all these other sites, their transuranics, and send it to Python because uh, there's 80 acres on site that's been okayed and cleared to give to this community group called SOTI, Southern Ohio Diversity Incentive, and they are part of DOE. They seem to get all this money from DOE to look for jobs and to do whatever DOE wants. So this 80 acres, they want to sell off 20 acres at a time, uh, $20,000. And when they get through with the 80 acres, they'll make $1.2 million, I think. And what we're going to get is two new power plants on site. And these power plants will be able to make the fuel for small modular reactors. So, I mean, we don't have any proof, but they did come out with a press release, an uh, area commissioner saying that they were going to put the two power plants here on site on this 80 acres. Our, our opinion is the 80 acres is contaminated. We have asked them to let us take uh, soil samples because we have independent people who have been in here and we, we've been helping take soil and water tests and there's contamination. Uh, one of the workers lives all the way in Lucasville where the prison is and his house is contaminated. Um, his name is Chuck Law Chick Lawson. And um, we, we know there's so much contamination and, and we keep taking all these tests. We have company records and the company keeps denying that there's anything there. There's no plutonium when they know it's there. It's in their own. We've been able to beat them all these years through their own records. And so we think piping is going to be reprocessing and, or recycling, whatever you want to call it, transuranics. And that's what they've been doing for 70 years. when We were supposed to be doing enriching uranium. And we were reprocessing reactor fuels. And that's how we got the plutonium, the neptunium, the americia, uh, TC-99. And there's a wide spread of this off-site. Uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Ketterer has been here doing all kind of testing. I bet you we've had, over the years, probably 10 or 12 experts who come in here. And they read the company documents that we have. And the company still is denying that there's off-site contamination. They don't want to admit it because once they admit it, they know they're going to be in trouble because they know that their documents says we have off-site contamination in Little Beaver Creek, Big Beaver Creek, Scioto River. I was with the EPA one year when they came in and they took uh, tissue samples and fish samples there in the Scioto River where they have a big pipe that comes from the plant to the side of rivers, a straight shot. And they found the fish there to be radioactive. Uh, we found ura radium-226 offsite and they denied that too. And then a month later, they come out in the paper saying that there was a radium bar stolen offsite. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff that they shipped offsite, they pretended like it was the PCB oil, but the PCB oil was radioactive. And some of the workers told me that they lied about the manifest of, the, of what was in there in, in the PCB oil. Um, we, we would like to get on the record down Winders list because there's so many people here has cancer. Uh, uh, Joe Mandeno came here to do an epidemiology study and he found a very high rate of cancer. Press did a study back in the 80s, and we found a high rate of cancer and heart problems. And so Joe just did a study on the Python area, and then he came back in and did another study of the seven counties around the Python plant, and we're all the highest in the state of Ohio, and 80, I think 85 or 87% nationally in cancer. 
I mean, everyone you talk to in this community has somebody who has cancer. Um, I, I don't know how a government can, can treat a community like this as if, if we're just guinea pigs. Um, I know that when I was at the plant site, they took a, a body in vivo of me, and this in vivo measures your your neck and and your and your ways you to see your body fat and all that. And they put me in this lead machine, and they found the Neptunium in my lungs and the cesium, and nothing's being done. I mean, if 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 I had that in in my lungs. How many of the other workers have it in their lungs? And I wouldn't have known it if I hadn't got my records full four or five times. They, they've locked my records up. And I every time I get them, I get something new. And I happened to find the test on the in vivos where they had taken them and never told me that I had the Neptunium in my lungs. Uh, it, it's a horrible story. My brother-in-law, he was 50-some years old. He passed away from the plant. Uh, his son right now is uh, fighting kidney cancer. Um, I just had another worker I was working with. I try to help workers get on this compensation bill. We fought for that compensation bill. And he just passed away last week. So the workers are fighting for this compensation that they have, but they're dying before they're getting their compensation. And they've made these workers jump through so many loopholes that it's hard for them to get compensated. Um, they, they, they treat us like human guinea pigs. It's just like we don't exist. They don't care about this community. Um, there, there's no other jobs here, so the people don't have any other place to go to work, and they pay such good money. One contractor called Ben Coleman's Construction, I, we went to them in the 90s and told them that, hey, your workers are driving the trucks, they're not suited up, and um, the, the workers from the plant were suited up in paper coveralls or whatever. And 17 family members from this one construction company died of cancer and illnesses from standing there by the trucks while they loaded it with contaminated stuff. And it's like they don't even care, because now we have workers telling me they're driving the trucks, and they're standing there, and they're not suited up. So how, how can the government continue to do something like this and show no empathy for the community? We'd have no transparency. Uh, we are locked out of all of the meetings. They have, they, they have the meetings on site, so we can't come and give any input. It's, it's a horrible story, what's going on here. And um, I don't know how they can deny all these experts. I mean, it's just not one. It's been built at least probably... 12 or 14 that's been in here trying to help the community. And Marvin Rezikov came and they read my records. It was in the records we have, and my records were company records. They said we had plutonium at the plant. And then in 1999, when we came forward with, with our records, then they said we didn't get very much. Well, now we're finding out after 99, we had been recycling all this reactor fuel from all these sites. So Python has all kinds of plutonium, neptunium, amaresia, strontium, chromium, you name it, Python has it. And so we're trying to figure out how we can get someone to listen and help us. And if anyone here has any suggestions, we would really appreciate it. And if there's any questions you'd like to ask me, uh, go ahead. And Fine. Dinah, thank you very much. Your story is, is you know, 40 years plus, 50, 60 years plus. Uh, Tim Chavez with WGRN wanted to sort of uh, join this conversation and sort of do a, 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 an overall of your work. So I wanted to bring Tim into this and then we'll we'll invite other folks in. Um, but your your statement, your work, your your uh, presence in that area for me has given me a c continuity um, with the struggle. Um, it, I, you're you're a hero, I, and Tim, please please uh, join in, please. Well, yeah, thanks, Vina, for uh, letting us know um, 
what very few people I think know about what's happening in Portsmouth because if it uh, goes down to, uh, and reaches the Ohio River and passes Cincinnati, I'm sure it's having some effect on uh, uh, in Cincinnati and other places along the, that route of the river um, in Ohio and other states. But um, what I'd like to ask you is that uh, this testing that was done offsite by uh, independent uh, agencies, was it, Vina? Yes. Yeah, independent uh, agencies. Dr. And, Michael Catter, yeah. Yeah, that's the most recent, but uh, like you said, you've had 15 experts out there. Well, where does this information go and where do these studies go? Uh, the That, you know, I'm sure they put out a report and they uh, present it to somebody and who do they present it to and what have been the reactions to that? Have there been public symposiums where they would sit down and give a presentation of what their findings were or... Can you give me some, uh, sort of enlighten us on that? Because and, I mean, uh, really, uh, like I said, I don't think anybody in Ohio really knows about that. As a matter of fact, Vina, I got to commend you. Is the first time I met you, I really had no idea about uh, nuclear uh, energy. And also, I would uh, uh, speak to friends of mine about it after I, I got some information. And everybody had the same attitude. He says, well, you know, nuclear is okay, but, you know, we got other stuff we could uh, do, but, you know, we can always use nuclear because it's important now. And they didn't have the slightest idea of the <clears throat> dangers of it uh, physically for, you know, the workers and for the people surrounding the area. So could you let me know what the results were in some of these tests or how did they present them to the community? So, Vina, just before that, I just want to say Tim Tim is with WGRN, our local radio station, and and has program director, coordinator, and, and filler, whatever whatever the definition is. But uh, he has definitely shown a great interest in knowing and finding out more about what's going on in the Pike County. So please uh, try try to catch up with all those questions. <laughs> Well, I've been I've been doing this since uh, '83. That's when I filed my first grievance. Uh, I don't have all the answers, and I don't. I'm not an expert, but I'm learning to be an expert. Uh, reading what's there, and when they say it's not there, and you're looking straight at their documents, and they they don't tell you what's there. Um, I was in the EPA office up in Logan once, and that's where I found out Little Beaver Creek was contaminated. And then I found a, a record on the well of, of Dorothy Dunham's well. She had a sister. And I caught, started reading it and it said that her well was contaminated with technetium 99. And so I took these records to Dorothy and I said, Dorothy, your water's contaminated. And I said, I got these at the EPA office. Well, the EPA office up in Logan said, the next time you come up here, you tell us what you want because our attorneys have to look at the records. But it was too late because I had already got EPA records and the company records that Little Beaver Creek was contaminated and Big Beaver and Little Beaver go straight out to the side of the river. And so they have given us a run around. And so sometimes you think, do we really know, you know what's out there? Or they write, we don't have anything there because they keep bringing out their experts and saying that um, there's no problem here. And then, then you start looking at your community and you talk to your people and you, and your your family members are dying. I mean, this is a dying community. There was there was one time that that our cancers got counted in Columbus, Cincinnati, uh, Cleveland. And it was never counted here. But then uh, we lobbied and people were trying to get them to do uh, the cancer studies by the area code or zip codes. And so when they did that, no matter where we go now, get diagnosed for cancer, it kicks us back to Soda County. It kicks us back home. And then when it did that, it started showing a higher rate of cancer. And, and uh, you know, Joe, he did an extensive study. Uh, we had a public meeting. You can't get the media here to come to the meetings to tell the people what's going on. I mean, if a reporter does a good story, they wind up getting fired. And now we don't have it really a local paper. We have like um, an online paper 
and then the Portsmouth Daily Times is down to two or three days a week. So they don't have reporters come and talking to us. And I've called and talked to a lot of them, but they they just don't seem to be interested. And I think the company pays so much money for an advertisement, like $900 a page, and they don't want to lose that money. So a lot of this has been covered up. Uh, we have been able to get some stories out on Scioto County Daily News. They seem to be uh, publishing what we're saying. But, you know, we're not the experts. You get these people coming out here. Like our county commissioner, he's on that SSAB board. He went to the local schools out here and told them that they didn't have a problem with radiation. He's not an expert in radiation. He had no business going to the schools and saying that to anybody. Uh, they need to come out and they need to let us go in and take testing. I mean, we we are, I've even got my own air monitor outside and getting it the filter check through uh, Michael Michael Ketter. And uh, he's, he's analyzing the samples. I've asked the plant to let me come out and let me test that 80 acres to see what's there. But they won't do it. They won't let me yes. come and get my own samples. And one thing I'm finding out is the NRC too, and the course. EPA, none of them has jurisdiction to come Perfect. over here and take their own samples. The only thing they're getting is the paperwork from the company. Whatever the company finds, they're the only ones who has jurisdiction over the radioactive nuclides. And what we're dealing here with at Python is not only just the Department of Energy, we're dealing with the Department of Defense. We're dealing with the military. And that's why it's been so hard to crack. You know, we do work for the military. And, and that's one reason the representatives don't want to talk to us. Oh, and then the, uh, the plant donates to our representatives. They give them money to, for their campaigns. And so we, we're not getting any help. And that, that's Joe's uh, study. And he said that, you know, our cancer rate here is the highest in the state of Ohio. He, he told me, he said, you know, he said, I feel sorry for your people. It's sad, you know, and uh, we're, we're begging for help. If we could get anyone, any of our representatives to help us and even maybe get us on RECRA for the downwinders so some of these community people can get paid for their cancers. Because it's hard. They've, there's been two lawsuits here. One was won back in, it took them 21 years to settle it. And now we have a couple here now with the Stuart Smith group that, that's still in the courts, but it could be tied up in court again another 20 years. So I, I don't know how we're going to just keep talking, I guess, keep talking and begging people to listen and come here and, and talk to the families with cancer. You know, our, that one school had five or six kids that died as a reason they shut it down. And it's sad that that our kids are sick and dying, not not only our, our family members, but our animals. Uh, I went to a vet, took my little dog to a vet, and the vet says, oh, he said, I know who you are, Vina Collie. He said, I'm glad to meet you. And he said, do you know I've been a veterinarian for 35 years or, or maybe even longer? And I said, yes, I know because I know who you were. And he said, you know, it's not just the people that are sick. The animals have cancer. They're sick. You know, and this is this is something that's horrible. I mean, we have deer that's on the plant side, and people kill it and take it home, and they usually take the liver. They used to take the liver from the plant. Um, we used to have a steam plant, and we had a, we had a coal-burning plant, and they burnt the radioactive um, PCB oils in that plant. And they would contaminate the community resident's home, and they'd have to go out and clean them inside and out. But then after Goodyear sold out in 85, they quit doing that. Um, there's there's so much that, that I've forgotten and things I'm trying to remember again. When you do this, it's a, I work with the workers, and, and, you know, I just was working with this one last week, and he passed away. They found him dead in his house. And, it really, it's, it's really emotional. It's a, it's a reason that I stay in this because people are dying and they need help.
and when the company records say we have a problem and they and they just turn their back on us, you know. Fine. All for the money. Dinah, thank you. Uh, Tim had his hand up for his, uh, to ask something or something. But Bina, um, no, you're not. No, you are not alone. We we try to help as much as we can. Yeah, we're in Columbus and it's a distance right. away, but um, we, we've tried and continue. And Pat Marita and you have been working very well at getting some things. And she's one of our sisters here. Um, and and just take care of yourself and 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 continue to uh, be the voice. We we always say speak speak to power. You know, to try to speak the truth to power. And you have been doing it for so many years. And I know you you, you can feel like it's just a like a hamster running in in circles. But you, you're doing so much good work, and you're documenting things so much that. Um, uh, Tim, do you want to talk or Sandy just raised her hand? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, just real quickly, Vine, I'd just like to know those plants that were burning, uh, you know, dirty material that, uh, you know, spread over the community, are they still doing that? Uh -huh. I, they took they took that uh, steam plant and tore it down and they got rid of the uh, cooling towers. Um, they, they also have a nickel plant that they buried out on site. Uh, a whole nickel plant from Huntington, West Virginia that we contaminated and they bought it outside and they buried it in an unlined pit. And so I um, I don't know. And uh, this study that uh, that you just recently got about the health effects in the area, um, how is how is that being disseminated? Has, has it been uh, sent to all the representatives of, of uh, Ohio? Has it been given to the senators? I'm sure Patnam has done that, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we had we had a meeting here the other day with the Agency for Toxic Substance and Disease Registry, and they came and gave their pre presentation. And Brown, Brown, and uh, Winthrow had 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 people in that meeting. But as soon as it was time for the community to talk, they got up and left. They were only they only wanted to hear what the Lion Agency had to say. I mean, they are corrupted. They're they're exposing people to radiation and they're killing killing the community. I mean you, you just cannot cannot comprehend how bad this is. Sandy, Sandy, you had a, a question. Are you available? Uh, uh, I don't yeah, see. I meant to put my phone on. Um, Vina, this is horrible, um, but really important to have your voice. I'm with a group, I don't know if you know us, Columbus Community Bill of Rights. Are you familiar with the Bill of Rights? Um, no, South I've heard, I think Canada. I've heard, heard, yeah. Okay, any rate, I left you in the chat my information. Maybe, yeah, I left my information in the chat for you, um, or if you wanna send me yours, but um, I would like to talk to you and have my group talk to you. I don't know if I see any of them on this call today. Usually we are all on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we it's really important. We work with, um, the. we're concerned about our water, air, and soil too. We're looking at it from the fracking angle. But, you know, we all know that it's not from coming just from one place. So I think it would be really important for us to get together. We can't be siloed like well, you're working with nuclear. We're working for, for fracking and somebody else is working with, you know, whatever. So um, we're all in it together. And um, I would like to get hold of, you know, in touch with you if you've got my information. But like I said, if, if, if it's easier for you to send me your information, that's fine, too. I'll get back with you sometime tomorrow. I'll make sure. And, and my phone. I'll make sure. My phone number. And my phone number is 740 don't Vina, don't put your phone number out over the air, please. It's, You'll get it's on recording, yeah. Trouble. Yeah. We'll, we'll make you and unmute you. yourself again. Well we'll Vina, we'll connect you too. Okay. We'll get you. Thank you, Vina. So Tim, do you want do you have any more uh that you wanted to bring no, in? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Sandy, yes. But Tim, mm-hmm. 
Uh, no, I just uh, you know this is um uh, uh, this is our last uh, salon of the 2023. How quickly what? it went! <laughs> you mean December 2023 is already the end of the year? What? The end of the year. So um so we got another uh, year coming up. Let's make it an exciting one. Uh, Vina, what do you think we could possibly do? What's a weak spot in uh, that's going on in Portsmouth that maybe be, could be stalled, could be uh, stopped? Uh, what 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 is it that uh, well you think that uh, is a weak spot that uh, actually we could uh, intervene and uh, just sort of focus on for the year of two thousand twenty four? Yeah, the halo. I really think I really the think halo, our the halo and the SMRs are something that's coming along, and and where where can we interject on in that? That's something new. Yeah. On the small modular reactors. Yeah. Yeah. Um... They they claim they're going to buy the two, put in the two power plants that pipe them for that, but I'm not sure. I know they're fighting that at every level on a higher higher level than us. But um, our commissioners oh. and our and our city councilors they need to be educated about what's going on out here at Pikeland because the commissioners are giving them anything that they want. Actually, the commissioner Brian Davis he is on the uh, the board of the. Um, Site Pacific Advisory Board, and he's giving the company whatever they want. I mean, that they have, we have no voice. And and um, I told him at the last meeting of the conflict in interest for him to be on there, and they told me I wasn't allowed to talk about that. And then I found out they had three people that told me that they were community reps, and they winded up being a mayor of Jackson and another politician from Jackson. These are on the advisory board. We don't have an advisory board. I don't know if you know Lee Blackburn, but he used to be on the advisory board. And they all quit because they didn't have any any way to get any e input. Yeah, hmm. yeah it, it gets to a point that you, you, you get shut down. And as Martin Luther King or many, many other uh, nonviolent revolutionaries always said, if you don't give nonviolence an option, then something else happens. So um, I, I, I am so grateful that you were able to join us tonight. Um, give us a little, little touch of what's going on down there, but it is the Ohio of the 17 nuclear plants that developed weapons, we had four of them historically. And Piked and Portsmouth was another uh, was a major player. They played with um, uh, uh, Oak Ridge, and and uh, those two were very much in, in cahoots with each other. Oak Ridge and Piketon seem to be the ones that have these multi lives. I mean, we think we we shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. And if you've ever been down on the South uh, State Route 23 going down towards um, Portsmouth, uh, take a time, turn left and check out that Piketon uh, facility. That is your tax dollars. Go drive around it. It, as, as Bina said, it is the largest or second largest uh, building in the, in the world. It is gigantic. That facility is gigantic. If you ever just go over there and just check it out, just drive. It's it's half a block, a uh, half a mile off 23, and uh, you can see it. It it, it it's amazing. Um, I don't know, Vina. I I you and your your crowd, your your community that has been helping along the ways. I, I personally, I don't know how you do it, but thank you for all that you've done and continue to do. And hopefully we can amplify your voice. Um, please write for the free press. Please write things and put it into the free press. Please get with Tim and, and others with the WGRN and get on the radio and, 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 and interview uh, those type uh, of concerns. Um, do you have any any other input that you'd like to say tonight? Uh, and then we'll probably move on to some other stuff, but never moving away from you. I, I want to thank you all for 
listening. I know it's, I know you can share the story over and over and over in these communities, but um, what what they what they're doing is is uh, criminal, uh, exposing people to radiation without their knowledge, um, throwing dumping stuff in our creeks in our water, and uh, the aquifer, like I said, is largest in the Midwest that the plant's sitting on, and there is fractured bedrock under this plant. That is come from a company doctor, I actually, or a com company document, and I actually gave it to the mayor of Python when he was after the plant to do, um, to do things the right way. And they used my bedrock fractures to get that new school built. And this guy from the Ferguson company, he said they might file a civil suit. Well, we've not heard no more from that. And it's my understanding that the Ferguson group works for the plant. So now I'm kind of thinking that was a dog and pony show just to, to ease our minds and, and make us forget about the bedrock fracture. But I can't forget about any of it. Yeah, I've been I've been to many of those uh, hearings, DOE and other folks that, uh, yeah, it, I wouldn't even call it a dog and pony. I don't even think that. It's a puppy and and uh, a mule. I don't really. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a criminal it's, act. Criminal act. I mean, it's 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 a fake, Corruption. fake, 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 uh, deep fake uh, uh, process that goes on whenever DOE is talking about Python. It, it's been so deep fake. And we're we're deep into that. Sandy has uh, an ask. Uh, Vina, stay with us. We're going to sort of expand our conversations a little bit, but then please stay with us. We'll we'll get back with you in a second. Uh, Cynthia Brown and then uh, and Sandy Boltness have uh, some uh, inf uh, updates that we want to talk. So Sandy, I don't know if Cynthia is still on. I saw her jump on and then she jumped off. But Sandy, why don't you? Say what you want to say with the uh, about the move to amend and veterans for peace, please. Okay. Well, actually, I just thought of a connection. You were talking about the dog and pony. How about the elephant and the donkey? This ah. <laughs> the dog and pony, or mm -hmm. uh, um, show. Anyway, I um, yeah, move to amend, which all of you probably know. I think on this call, corporations are not people. Money is not speech. Talking to you, Charles. How how you doing? <laughs> Um, we, um, we are working with a lot of different groups, but one of them just recently is Veterans for Peace. And so I would like to have, um, gather people together just for informally. And I want to do this regularly, like once a month, um, um, you know, people who definitely veterans, are there any veterans on this call? Any veterans out there? Okay, so um, I'll have to expand that group a little bit, but um, oh no, I Sandy, you I'm will, a veteran. You will sign. You will find veterans. I the, the the thing for for us in the past, we've had veterans, but they didn't want to organize. And so, if you're wanting to take that lead, I believe it will come. It will come. So just take patience and let it go. Um, veteran, I mean, I've been a veteran of many different protests and veteran of many different wars, but, uh, but um, uh, I would say that keep that going. I think we do need to get a Central Ohio Veterans for Peace going, and uh, I think you're in a key position to be able to do that. Well, what I'm putting the call out for now is to, um, you know, have, you know, definitely for veterans, for Veterans for Peace, but also there's there's just so much there's so many connections they're all connections and just having um people gather just very informally um but just to talk about things um commiserate enjoy each other's company that kind of thing um and i wanted this once a month but i would like to know um if there are you know i you know where and when that kind of thing um, I'd like to work with other people's schedules. So if this, um, I hate to say this interests you when you're not sure what this is all about, but um, so maybe I'll put a call out later on or get with Suzanne about putting it in the list. But um, definitely want to just have an informal gathering with anybody who, you know, just 
just time to chat, um, talk over things and share th things and hear from others. But it's not, I don't want it to be like a regular meeting, just, you know, time we talk, maybe some updates about what's going on. So um, I'm going to arrange for that. What I, If you're interested in all of doing this, you can contact me. I'll put my number in the chat or my email. I'll put my phone number. That way you can just contact me, um, text or call. And, um, you know, we only need two people and then we'll set it up and I'll let other people know what time and where day and day. You when got, that you got two, Rick. Rick and you are there already. So we're we're ready to go. Where's Rick? Rick Wilhelm is right oh, there. Oh, hi. Hi there. Okay, Rick, I'll send you my information if you want to call me after this and then we'll we'll if if you're interested and we'll, we'll talk about it and maybe get something going but again real informal um just a matter of kind of getting together and giving updates on what's going on yeah we we've, we've uh, yeah. Sandy, i put being vine's number in the chat direct message to you so okay Vinus. thank thank you Stephen. thank you great thanks and Vina, I will I will connect you and Sandy uh, outside of this this communication as well. So um, again, Vina, your work is so critical to to America, to Ohio, um, to to Piketon, Sida Sida, Sida and and Pike counties. You know, because you can't just say Pike and or Sciota because the two have been impacted so so severely. Um, please know that you're not alone, and and that we we try to try to reach and and ex, explore what how we can help you. Uh, stay in touch with us, please. Um, and Mark, somebody had a question for. Bina, uh Kevin uh, Keith uh, said Kevin, Kevin you... wanted to know wanted to know if you had I was going to get to that wanted to know if you have ever been exposed to radiation on purpose do you know if you have ever if by you know by Goodyear whoever and that's the damn thing about it oh excuse me I'm sorry Stephen um Goodyear Goodyear was the company until 1985 that was doing this stuff, Goodyear. And you think of them as good, doing good stuff, but they were the ones doing what they do. So Vina, please, uh, it had, have you ever had a, uh, a, any knowledge that uh, anything that happened to you or to any of coworkers, was it, was it intentional? I believe it was. Um... I didn't at first, but since I've researched them, I look at the company documents, I look at the congressional hearings about the radiation at the plant. They knew, but they didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. And and I want to say, too, that Python is a special exposure cohort. And what that means is they never uh, suited us up. They didn't keep our records. They shredded our records. And they can't prove how much exposure that we have. And according to the spatial exposure cohort, if you have 22 different cancers, then you was to get compensated under the Energy Employees Compensation Act of 2000, or 20,000. And um, um, 22 cancers that they've admitted that, that working at the plant caused. The uh, problem is we're not supposed to be dosed to, uh, if we have any of the cancers or these illness, they're not supposed to dose us because they can't, because they shredded our records. Well, they're making these workers go through dose reconstruction. And then I had this one guy, his wife, his mother worked there. Uh, she had 20 some or 30 some percent and they dosed her two other times and she winded up at the end getting about 19%. And so they turned their family down for the survivorship for his mother because they dosed her and they can't because we are a special cohort site. We're not supposed to be dosed, but that's another criminal act and they're getting by with it. And and I try to help as many workers as I can to get their records together to file. And then I've even got an attorney out in New York to help some of these workers. But there's a lot that we don't know who's filing and who's gotten turned down 
and, the, and they're just giving up because they cannot get them to recognize their cancers. And I've talked to NIOSH, they know that Python is a special cohort site, so I don't know how they're getting by. That's a, like I said, that's another criminal act against the workers. The community, you know, if, if they file a lawsuit, that's not going to compensate very many people, maybe within a, a six mile air radius to a 10 mile radi radius. And we're talking about people 50 to 100 miles away from that plant that has been affected with the chiclet matter, the fluorides that they've released all those years, and the chromium and, and all of these chemicals that they've released is going further than 50 miles. And so the only way I can see that these people will ever get compensated is through the RECRA, RECRA downwinders. And that's going to take a that's going to take a worldwide community to get this to happen. All of our representatives have to be pressured to get this RECRA downwinders bill passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. I don't know if Cynthia is still on. She was going to make an announcement about her current. Um, she was on for a second and got off. She's in, uh, uh, Mark, she's in Arizona. And she, uh, I asked her if she's coming back and she had to go run an errand. She's um, staying with some family members and doing stuff in Arizona tonight. And uh, what's happening is that her petition, it, they're trying one more time and they're trying to get them all signed prior to Christmas. And uh, she sent me a copy of the petition, which apparently I can print out. And this is this is the thousand signatures you need to get to get your language approved so that you can go on and actually do a statewide petition. And this is the Ohio Coalition to End Qualified Immunity that all of us are pretty familiar with. But what it does, it ends the um, special um, kind of, you know, the way that uh, any government employee gets out of being punished for doing anything criminal is that they're under this qualified immunity uh, rule. And it just needs to end because that's particularly why a lot of policemen aren't held accountable after they shoot somebody. And Cynthia Brown, if you guys remember, we gave her the Libby Award last month at um, uh, the Vanderelli Room at our Free Press Awards event. And she's been working on this qualified immunity for several years. And it stemmed from her, I think it's her nephew, who uh, wasn't doing anything at all, I believe, and was just in the neighborhood outside and was um, shot, killed by the police uh, several years ago. So, uh, so there is an event that I'm going to reiterate that Mark mentioned a little bit earlier. There's going to be an event at the Old First Presbyterian Church, which is at Ohio and Bryden, tomorrow at two o'clock, and it's to commemorate the Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights, U United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. And if you guys are going to come and join us for that event, I could bring the petition there and get some signatures. And I think there's a Vanderelli Room event happening after the uh, Human Rights event. And I'll bring the petition there. And otherwise, I'll try to get with people to get some signatures here while Cynthia is in Arizona. So that's that announcement. Thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, so it, it it's to restart a campaign that she's been doing for a long time. But this this one is to get a petition uh, to just restart it up. So, um, Vina. Uh, you speak of the horrors and the long, uh, arduous tasks that you have. What brings you joy? What brings you joy? What brings you joy? When I see a family that their kids have cancer and they survive it, uh, when workers get their compensation for their illnesses, that brings me joy mm -hmm. and to see that plant shut down would bring me joy to know that nobody yeah. else nobody else would be a victim of, of this injustice yes that keeps me in it every time I think I'm going to give up and some family calls me and I go to their house and I see their kids and I just can't give it up 
I, and I don't know, I don't know how many of us would be able to do what you've been doing for years. Um, yeah. I appreciate it. Radiation too. Yeah. What was that? Yes, yeah, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Michael wants to know where the uh, human rights event is again tomorrow. What time and where? Can you Old First Presbyterian Church, 1101 Bryden Road, Bryden and Ohio Avenue, 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. We're gonna, And we're going to try to record it so it'll have legs. We'll read it, and then we're going to post it. So and we have probably about 20 people signed up right now that will come read it, um, different articles. But we need, you know, there's 30 articles, so if we want one person per article, uh, it'd be good to have 30, but we don't need to have 30. We're, we're good. We're about 20 right now. So that COVID though, that COVID keeps hitting. And some of the folks are saying they've hit, just got that COVID again. So I got three, four from my friends just said recently that COVID hit them. So um, the virus is still out there. So always be careful and then be careful of each other. Um, but no, take care of each other. Don't be careful of each other. Be care for each other yeah and Vina again thank you Tim is saying thanks Vina and let let's you and I get together and write an article for the free press so Tim wants to you and he to write something together so I know you 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 have been sort of a reticent you you don't want to uh, write things too often but uh, Tim's offering to help you and help him write an article um, actually Actually, I think Vina would probably, um, uh, uh, she would uh, participate with anybody in writing an article for any anybody uh, here on the free press that could assist her with it. And uh, that's what I'm offering. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Vina, thank you so much. Have a good holiday. Enjoy your family. And let's see what we can do for your community and the community of Ohio. And yeah. thank you all. Yeah. Yeah, remember that Free Press is, is uh, one of those uh, longest standing uh, alternative uh, news sources that speaks truth to power. And we, we try to, uh, to articulate, and we're not only just local, we, we have a web page that is international. We have connections all around. So um, just remember that... Uh, we may we might be small, but we are mighty, <laughs> and we have we've had much much and WGRN WCRS, you know we have we have ways to get the voice out. We do have the voice. So if you're feeling shut down at Piketon and the in in the Pike County area and in Portsmouth and 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 in the smaller areas there, um send that voice up and it's amazing and when we did that that work on the blue ribbon uh you know when they were wanting to bring all the new dumps the dump stuff and uh we were able to garner a fairly large group and and um brought an end to that expectation <laughs> uh, very quickly um so it, columbus is close enough I think we can resonate some, and and actually that's where some of the the dumbest people in the world are down at State House, <laughs> and but they're the ones that make the choices. So we 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 need to. I I remember when uh, Senator John Glenn visited Fernald and, and got dosed once, and he uh, all of a sudden became an advocate for uh, closing down Fernald. So maybe we need to get Senator Vance to go get dosed at Portsmouth and, <laughs> and and maybe he'll become an advocate too. I don't know. Uh, I'm, my mother-in-law is just calling from Japan. So <laughs> that's, she, my wife was just bringing him up. But, but um, another, another, uh, sad state of affairs of where uh, the United States bombed um, Japan. But anyways, uh, Department of Energy and Department of Defense 
have such a relationship that is a weird relationship with Python. Um, how, where are the the points of access that we could um, play with somehow? Uh, as a political science person, I always think there's there's strategic access points. Um, when you're, you know, when Department of Defense uh, does not have their audit pass for the last three years, at least, maybe longer, they've not been able to pass their audit. Department of Energy uh, also has loose, loose lips. <laughs> uh they they don't know where they're going uh, as as an organization uh, how, do you see access points where where can we go and and to, to press this a little bit more and we we are at 801 so we're probably going to cut this conversation off within a few minutes but uh Vina, do do you see any access points that might be uh, uh valuable for us to sort of push a little bit harder I think that we need to push our representatives to have a real community meeting. The okay. transparency, uh, they've done all kind of investigations at Pikeman. They know there's a lot of corruption going on there, but nothing's being done. And so uh, you talked about Fernal a while ago, and what's funny about that, I know Senator Glenn went there and got contaminated. Well, when they they scored the Superfund list, I don't think Fernald even made it. You had to make 25-something to be on the Superfund list. Well, Python scored 54-something. They doubled the Superfund list, and we've never been put on it. Correct. But, Correct. Correct. So I don't know if we could just get the representatives to, to come here and get enough people to force them to come here and to talk to the real community, not just the workers or DOE employees. Mm -hmm. They they completely have locked this community out. So that's another angle that we can go through. And of course, the rec would, would be a really good angle, too. What was that last one? I'm sorry. The RECRA, the Downwinders uh, Compensation Plan. The down, yes, the Downwinders. Yeah. And yeah. with Oppenheimer movie uh, coming out this year, the Downwinders were sorely missed mm -hmm. in that in that that movie. And we can use that as a jumping start as well outside of even this this concern is that, dude, your movie missed the point. The downwinders, downwinders, downwinders. I mean, it, it, it it's been a consistent concern. It, the cycle, the nuclear cycle from digging it up to how you get rid of it. Which is impossible. A um, disaster. It is a disaster. It's, yeah. it's malfeasance. At that best. was uh, speaking of movies. That was uh, Harvey Wasserman's uh, uh, had uh, also brought that up in the movie Earthquake that, that showed a, a, a simulation of the earthquake in Los Angeles, and he said, "Hey, you guys forgot about Diablo Canyon." <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, probably the biggest threat of an earthquake in Los Angeles. Is the nuclear plant there? Yeah. So uh, you know, um, yeah, that's that's point well made. The one thing we can't forget about too is they're decommissioning this plant, and they're exposing a whole lot of people in open air. It's an open air demolition, and we have all this stuff in in the holdup in the piping at the A plant. And they took down the three twenty six building, and that's when they started showing a lot more higher off-site contamination again and they've got a lot of more buildings they got to take down and they're going to they're doing this open air demolition and it's, it's going all through the air now i don't know how we're going to stop it that's 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 the confusion divina are they decommissioning or are they commissioning they're the doing site? both they're doing both okay they're doing both yes so even in the decommissioning it's poorly being it's uh yes. facilitated yes uh, wow. They they put a can canopy over the 326 building, but we have we have a Facebook and it's under Vina Collie, and we uh, put a lot of documents on there because we used to have a web page, but they would hack them all the time and we couldn't keep keep it going. But they've been 
I've been pretty successful with the Facebook. And so uh, it showed him having a canopy and the wind blowing everywhere. And the canopy was not doing anything, keeping the contamination there. And they're just, they're just clean. They're just putting this stuff into the air. And depending on how, what, what direction the wind's going in, um, where it's going, how many miles it's going away from the plant, it's a disaster. Vine again, thank you for sharing uh, your your work and your history of work. Um, again, 1989. It seems like it was just yesterday, but it's not. I know your your struggle is a day to day. Uh, I was speaking at at a uh, meeting the other day, and that they were talking about how how I, I I brought it in. I was like, and I have people coming in. I mean, the anxiety level is so high right now, and people are crying on my shoulder. You know, women, young women, mothers, uh, it's crying about the 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 lack of access to economic capacity. Um, I know you're going through that as well with people crying on your shoulder and that 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 anxiety that that frustration that 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 sore feeling of not being whole um not being made whole by so many different characters uh weighs heavy and I know it does so just know we we We'll constantly keep you in our prayers and our thoughts, and uh, know that we're we're trying our best to figure this out as well. Uh, but keep doing what you're doing. Uh, don't give it up. Don't give it up. No matter if 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 they come in and take all your computers and your phones, like they've done to Yuri over in your Ukraine. Uh, one of the our 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 fellow uh, war resistors in Ukraine. They've taken all his stuff. Uh, but he can continues and he he sent its greetings tonight to you, specifically to you about your work and uh, to 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 say that you you are one of those heroes. And that's why I said you are a hero. Um, you are an Ohio hero and we need to understand that uh, press and your work is, is invaluable. Uh, we cannot do things without local documentations, local uh, involvement, and um, so important, so important. So thank you again for sharing tonight, and please join us again whenever you'd like to. I mean, anytime you have something to share with the Columbus Free Press community, please join us. We're here, what, every second Saturday of, of, the, of the every month. We're here doing salons. So uh, if you have something coming up, Definitely make sure we know what's going on, okay? And uh, we'll try to we'll try to get down there at some of the hearings that are going on. We'll try to push uh, the general assembly. The general assembly is really it, it's toxic right now. Uh, um, but we'll we'll keep working. Can't can't give up. Can't give up. Suzanne, do you have anything at the end of of this uh, salon? Stephen, anybody have anything? Uh, I don't have anything to, I think Charlie might have just raised his hand. Charles, where are you at, man? No, no, he was just reaching. <laughs> Never mind. He was scratching himself. Well, hi, Charlie, anyway. Nice to see you. Yeah, definitely. Some people Charlie. I haven't seen for a while. Daryl Davis, hello. Frank, Andre, um, 